Chapter 11 of My Larger Education. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. My Larger Education by Booker T. Washington. Chapter 11 What I Learned About Education in Denmark. On the railway train between Copenhagen, Denmark, and Hamburg, Germany, i fell into conversation with an english traveller who had been in many parts of the world and who like myself was returning from a visit of observation and study in denmark we exchanged travellers experiences with each other i found that he had had the opportunity to study conditions in that country a great deal more thoroughly than was true in my case and he gave me much information that i was glad to have about the condition of agriculture and the life of the people in return i told him something of the places i had visited before going to denmark and of the way i had attempted to dig down here and there in different parts of europe beneath the crust and see what was going on in the lower strata of social life i said to him finally that after all i had seen i had come to the conclusion that the happiest country in europe perhaps the happiest country in the world is denmark then i asked him if he knew any part of the world where the people seemed to come so near to solving all of their problems as in denmark he seemed a little startled and a little amused at that way of putting the matter but after considering the question he confessed that he had never visited any other part of the world that seemed to be in a more generally healthy and wholesome condition than this same little country which we were just leaving behind us denmark is not rich in the sense that england and the united states are rich i do not know what the statisticians say about the matter but i suppose that in denmark there are few if any such great fortunes as one finds in england in the united states and in many parts of europe in fact there is hardly room enough in this little land for a multimillionaire to move about in as it is less than one-third the size of the state of alabama although it has one-third more population denmark is an agricultural country about two-fifths of the whole population are engaged in some form or other of agriculture the farms in denmark have been wonderfully prosperous in recent years i doubt however whether as much money has been made or can be made in denmark as has been made on the farms in the best agricultural districts in america the soil is not particularly rich a large section of the country is or has been until recent years made up of barren heath like that in northern scotland within the past few years as a result of one of the most remarkable pieces of agricultural engineering that has ever been attempted large tracts of this waste have been made over into fruitful farmland in spite of disadvantages however the country has greatly prospered for a number of years past people have been coming from all over the world to study danish agriculture and they have gone away marveling at the results i am not going to try to tell in detail what these results were or in what manner they have been obtained i will merely say that it seems to be generally conceded that both in the methods of culture and in the marketing of the crops denmark has gone farther and made greater progress than any other part of the world furthermore there is no country i am certain not even the united states or canada where the average farmer stands so high or exercises so large an influence upon political and social life as he does in denmark at the present time what's back of the danish farmer i said to my english friend what is it that has made agriculture in this country it's the danish schools he replied i had asked the same question before and received various replies but they all wound up with a reference to the schools particularly the country high schools i had heard much of them in america i had heard of them again in england for ninety per cent of denmark's agricultural exports goes to england 
It was not, however, until I reached Denmark, saw the schools themselves, and talked with some of the teachers, not, in fact, until after I had left Denmark and had opportunity to look into and study their history and organization that I began to comprehend the part that the rural high schools were playing in the life of the masses of the Danish people, and to understand the manner in which they had influence and helped to build up the agriculture of the country there are two things about these rural high schools that were of peculiar interest to me first they have had their origin in a movement to help the common people and to lift the level of the masses particularly in the rural district second they have succeeded i venture to say that in no part of the world is the general average intelligence of the farming class higher than it is in denmark i was impressed in my visits to the homes of some of the small farmers by the number of papers and magazines to be found in their homes in recent years there has sprung up in many parts of europe a movement to improve the condition of the working masses through education wherever any effort has been made on a large scale to improve agriculture it has almost invariably taken the form of a school of some sort or other for example in hungary the state has organized technical education in agriculture on a grand scale nowhere in europe i learned has there been such far-reaching effort to improve agriculture through experimental and research stations agricultural colleges high schools and common schools there is this difference however hungary has tried to improve agriculture by starting at the top creating a body of teachers and experts who are expected in turn to influence and direct the classes below them denmark has begun at the bottom one of the principal aims of the hungarian government as appears from a report by the minister of agriculture was to adapt the education to the needs of the different classes and take care at the same time that these different classes did not learn too much did not learn anything that would unfit them for their station of life i noticed for example that it was necessary to close the agricultural school at de Brixen, which was conducted in connection with an agricultural college at the same place because as the report of the minister of agriculture states the pupils of this school being in daily contact with the first-year pupils of the college attempted to imitate their ways wanted more than was necessary for their social position and at the same time aimed at position they were unable to maintain all this is in striking contrast to the spirit and method of the danish rural high school which started among the poorest farming class and has grown year by year until it has drawn within its influence nearly all the classes in the rural community in this school it happens that the daughters of the peasant and of the nobleman sometimes sit together on the same bench and that the sons of the landlord and of the tenant frequently work and study side by side sharing the personal friendship of their teacher and not infrequently the hospitality of his home the most striking thing about the rural high school in denmark is that it is neither a technical nor industrial school and although it was created primarily for the peasant people the subject of agriculture is almost never mentioned at least not with the purpose of giving practical or technical education in that subject it may seem strange that in a school for farmers nothing should be said about agriculture and i confess that it took some time for me to see the connection between this sort of school and denmark's agricultural prosperity it seemed to me as i am sure it will seem to most other persons that the simplest and most direct way to apply education to agriculture was to teach agriculture in the schools the real difference between the hungarian and danish methods of dealing with this problem is however in the spirit rather than in the form in hungary the purpose of the schools seems to be to give each individual such training as it is believed will fit him for the particular occupation which his station of life assigns him and no more the government decides in other words education is founded on a system of caste if the man below learns in school to look to the man in station above him if he begins to dream and hope for something better than the life to which he has been accustomed then a social and political principle is violated and as the commissioner of agriculture says 
the government is not deterred from issuing energetic orders of course the natural result of such measures is to increase the discontent just as soon as another class of people feel that privileges granted to others are denied to them immediately these privileges whether they are the opportunities for education or anything else assume in the eyes of the people to whom they are denied a new importance and value the result of this policy is seen in immigration statistics i doubt from what i have been able to learn whether all the efforts made by the hungarian government in the way of agricultural instruction have done very much to allay the discontent among the masses of the farming population thousands of these hungarian peasants every year still prefer to try their fortune in america and the steady exodus of the farming population continues the rural high school in denmark has pursued just the opposite policy it has steadily sought to stimulate the ambitions and the intellectual life of the peasant people instead however of compelling the ambitious farmer's boy who wants to know something about the world to go to america to the ordinary college or to the city the schools have brought the learning of the colleges and the advantages of the city to the country the most interesting and remarkable thing about these high schools is the success they have had in presenting every subject that an educated man should know about in such a form that will make it intelligible and interesting to country boys and girls who have only had perhaps the rudiments of a common school education the teachers in these country high schools are genuine scholars they have to be for the reason that the greater part of their teaching is in the form of lectures without textbooks of any kind and their success depends upon the skill with which they can present their subjects in order to awaken interest and enthusiasm they have to go to the sources of their knowledge most of the teachers whom i met could speak two or three languages i was surprised at the knowledge which every one i met in denmark from the king and queen to the peasants displayed in american affairs and the interest they showed in the progress of the negro and the work they have been doing at tastigi as an illustration of the wide interests that occupy the teachers in these rural schools i found one of them engaged in translating professor william james's book on pragmatism into the danish language i have heard it said repeatedly since i was in denmark that the danish people as a whole were better educated and better informed than any other people in europe statistics seem to bear out this statement for according to the migration figures of nineteen hundred although twenty four point two per cent of all persons over fourteen years of age coming into the united states as immigrants could neither read nor write only point eight per cent of the immigrants from scandinavia were illiterate of the germans among whom i had always supposed education was more widely diffused than elsewhere in europe five point eight per cent were illiterate before i go further perhaps i ought to give some idea of what these rural high schools look like one of the most famous of them is situated about an hour's ride from copenhagen near the little city of Roskilde it stands on a piece of rolling ground overlooking a bay where the little fisher vessels and small seafaring craft are able to come far inland almost to the centre of the island all around are wide stretches of rich farmland dotted here and there with little country villages there is as i remember one large building with a wing on either end in one of these wings the headmaster of the school lives and in the other is a gymnasium in between are the schoolrooms where the lectures are held everything about the school is arranged in a neat and orderly manner simple clean and sweet and i was especially impressed by the wholesome home-like atmosphere of the place teachers and pupils ate together at the same table and meet together in a social way in the evening teachers and students are thus not merely friends they are in a certain sense comrades in the school at Roskilde, there are usually about one hundred and fifty students during the winter term of five months the young men are in school in the summer the young women take their turn pupils pay for board and lodging twenty crowns a little more than five dollars a month and for tuition twenty crowns the first month fifteen the second 
ten the third, five the fourth, and nothing the fifth. These figures are themselves an indication of the thrift as well as the simplicity with which these schools are conducted. Twenty years ago, when they were first started, I was told that pupils used to sleep together in a great sleeping room on straw mattresses and eat with wooden spoons out of a common dish, just as the peasant people did at that time. This reminds me that just about the same time at Tuskegee, pupils were having similar hardships. For one thing, I recall that, in those days, the food for the whole school was cooked in one large iron kettle, and that sometimes we had to skip a meal because there wasn't anything to put in the kettle. Since that time, conditions have changed, not only in the rural schools of Denmark, but among the country people. At the present day, if not every peasant cottage, at least every cooperative dairy has its shower bath. A small farmer who, a few years ago, looked upon every innovation with mistrust is likely now to have his own telephone, for Denmark has more telephones to the number of the population than has any other country in Europe, and every country village has its gymnasium and its assembly hall for public lectures. I have before me on my desk a school plan showing the manner in which the day is disposed of. School begins at 8 o'clock in the morning and ends at 7 o'clock in the evening, with two hours rest at noon. Two-thirds of the time of the school is devoted to instruction in the Danish mother tongue and in history. The rest is given to arithmetic, geography, and the natural sciences. It is peculiar to those schools that most of the instruction is given in the form of lectures. There are no examinations and few recitations. Not only the natural sciences, but even the higher mathematics, are taught historically by lectures. The purpose is not to give the student training in the use of these sciences, but to give him a general insight into the manner in which different problems have arisen, and of the way in which the solution of them has widened and increased our knowledge of the world. In the Danish rural high school, emphasis is put upon the folk songs, upon Danish history and the old northern mythology. The purpose is to emphasize, in opposition to Latin and Greek teaching of the colleges, the value of the history and the culture of the Scandinavian people, and incidentally to instill into the minds of the pupils the patriotic conviction that they have a place and mission of their own among the people of the world. There are several striking things about this system of rural high schools, of which there are now 120 in Denmark. The first thing about them that impressed me was the circumstances in which they had their origin. In the beginning, the rural high schools were a private undertaking, as indeed they still are, although they get a certain amount of support from the state. The whole scheme was worked out by a few courageous individuals who were sometimes opposed but frequently assisted by the government. The point that I wish to emphasize is that they did not spring into existence all at once, but that they grew up slowly and are still growing. It took long years of struggles to formulate and popularize the plans and methods which are now in use in these schools. In this work, the leading figure was a Lutheran bishop, Nikolai Frederick Severin Grundvik, who is often referred to as the Luther of Denmark. The rural school movement grew out of a non-sectarian religious movement and was, in fact, an attempt to revive the spiritual life of the masses of the people. Rural high schools were established as early as 1844, but it was not until 20 years later when Denmark, as a result of her disastrous war with Prussia, had lost one-third of her richest territory, that the rural high school movement began to gain ground. It was at that time, when affairs were at their lowest ebb in Denmark, that Grundvig began preaching to the Danish people the gospel that what had been lost without must be regained within, and that what had been lost in battle must be gained in peaceful development of the national resources. Bishop Grundvig saw that the greatest national resource of Denmark, as it is in any country, was its common people. The schools he started and the methods of education he planned were adapted to the needs of the masses. They were an attempt to popularize learning, put it in simple language. 
rob it of its mystery and make it the common property of the common people another thing peculiar about these schools is that they are not for children but for older students eighty per cent of the students in the rural high schools are from eighteen to twenty-five years of age twelve per cent are more than twenty-five years of age and only eight per cent are under eighteen these schools are in fact farmer colleges they presuppose the education of the common school the farmer's son and the farmer's daughter before they enter the rural high school have had training in the public schools and have had practical schooling in the work of the farm and the home at just about the age when a boy or a girl begins to think about leaving home and of striking out in the world for himself just at the age where there comes if ever to a youth the desire to know something about the larger world and about all the mysteries and secrets that are buried away in books or handed down in traditions in the schools just at this time the boys and girls are sent away to spend two seasons or more in the rural high school as a rule they go not to the school in their neighborhood but to some other part of the country there they make the acquaintance of other young men and women who like themselves have come directly from the farms and this intercourse and acquaintance helps to give them a sense of common interest and to build up what the socialists call a class consciousness all of this experience becomes important a little later in the building up of cooperative societies cooperative dairies cooperative slaughterhouses societies for the production and sale of eggs for cattle raising and for other purposes the present organization of agriculture in denmark is indirectly but still very largely due to the influence of the rural school the rural high school came into existence as i have said as the result of a religious rather than of a merely social or economic movement different in methods and in outward form as these high schools are from the industrial schools of the negro in america they have this in common that they are non-sectarian but in the broadest deepest sense of the word religious they seek not merely to broaden the minds but to raise and strengthen the moral life of the masses of the people this peculiar character of the danish rural high school was defined to me in one word by a gentleman i met in denmark he called them inspirational it is said of grunvig that he was one of those who did not look for salvation merely in political freedom in spite of this fact the rural high schools have had a large influence upon politics in denmark it is due to them although they have carefully abstained from any kind of political agitation that denmark under the influence of its peasant ministry has become the most democratic country in europe it is certainly a striking illustration of the result of this education that what a comparatively few years ago was the lowest and the most oppressed class in denmark namely the small farmer has become the controlling power in the state as seems to be the case in the present time i have gone to some length to describe the plans and general character of the rural high schools because they are the earliest the most peculiar and unusual feature in danish rural life and education and because although conducted in the same spirit they are different in form and methods from the industrial schools with which i have been mainly interested during the greater part of my life the high schools however are only one part of the danish system of rural schools in recent years there has grown up side by side with the rural high school another type of school for technical training in agriculture and in household arts for example not more than half a mile from the rural high school which i visited at roskilde there has recently been erected what we in america would call an industrial school where scientific agriculture as well as technical training and home-keeping are given in this school young men and women get much of the same practical training that is given our students at tuskegee with the exception that this training is confined to agriculture and housekeeping besides there is at these agricultural schools no attempt to give students a general education as is the case with the industrial schools in the south 
in fact schools like hampton and tuskegee are trying to do for their students and at the same time what is done in denmark through two distinct types of school i found this school like its neighbor the high school admirably situated surrounded by beautiful gardens in which the students raise their own vegetables in the kitchen the young women learned to prepare the meals and to set the tables i was interested to see also that in the whole organization of the school there was an attempt to preserve the simplicity of country life in the furniture for example there was an attempt to preserve the solid simplicity and quaint artistic shapes with which the wealthier peasants of fifty or a hundred years ago furnished their homes dr robert e park my companion on my trip through europe told me when i visited this school that he found one of the professors at work in the garden wearing the wooden shoes that used to be worn everywhere in the country by the peasant people this man had traveled widely had studied in germany where he had taken a degree in his particular specialty at one of the agricultural colleges perhaps the most interesting and instructive part of my visit was the time that i had spent at what is called a husband's or cotter's school located at ringstead and founded by n j nielsen klodskoff in nineteen o two at this school i saw such an exhibition of vegetables grains and especially of apples as i think i had ever seen before certainly not at any agricultural school i wish i had opportunity to describe in detail all that i saw and learned about education and the possibilities of country life in the course of my visit to this interesting school what impressed me most with regard to it and to the others that i visited was the way in which the different types of schools in denmark have succeeded in working into practical harmony with one another the way also in which each in its separate way had united with the other to uplift vivify and inspire the life and work of the country people for example the school at ringstead in addition to the winter course in farming for men and the summer school in household arts for women offers just as we do at tuskegee a short course in which the older people are invited the courses are divided between the men and the women the men's course coming in the winter and the women's course in the summer during the period of instruction which lasts eleven days these older people live in the school just as the younger students do and gain thus the benefit of an intimate association with each other and with their teachers to illustrate to what extent this school and the others like it have reached and touched the people i will quote from a letter written to me by the founder he says the kiorhav husband school cotter school is the first of its kind in denmark it is a private undertaking and the buildings erected since nineteen o two are worth about four hundred thousand crowns one hundred thousand dollars during the seven years in which it has been in operation six hundred and thirty one men and six hundred and three women have had training for six months in addition three thousand two hundred and five men and women have attended the eleven day courses in addition to the short courses in agriculture and housekeeping offered by the school at ringstead some of the rural high schools hold every fall great public assemblies like our chautauquas which last from a few days to a week and are attended by men and women of the rural districts at these meetings there are public lectures on historical literary and religious subjects in the evening there are music singing and dancing and other forms of amusement these annual assemblies held under the direction of the rural high schools have largely taken the place of the former annual harvest home festivals in which there was much eating and drinking as i understand but very little that was educational or uplifting in addition to these yearly meetings which draw together people from a distance there are monthly meetings which are held either in the high school buildings or in the village assembly buildings or in the halls connected with the village gymnasiums in the cities these meetings are sometimes held in the high school homes as they are called 
which serve the double purpose of places for the meetings of young men's and young women's societies and at the same time as cheap and home-like hotels for the traveling country people in this way the rural high schools have extended their influence to every part of the country making the life on the farm attractive and enabling denmark to set before the world an example of what a simple wholesome and beautiful country life can be no doubt there are in the country life of denmark as of other countries some things that cast a shadow here and there on the bright picture i have drawn new problems always spring up out of the solution of the old ones no matter how much has been accomplished those who know conditions best will inevitably feel that their work has just begun however that may be i do not believe that there will be found anywhere a better illustration of the possibilities of education than in the results achieved by the rural schools of denmark one of the things that one hears a great deal of talk about in america is the relative value of cultural and vocational education i do not think that i clearly understood until i went to denmark what a cultural education was i had gotten the idea from what i had seen of the so-called cultural education in america that culture was always associated with greek and latin and that people who advocated it believed that there was some mysterious almost magical power which was to be gotten from the study of books or from the study of something ancient and foreign far from the common and ordinary experiences of men i found in denmark schools in which almost no textbooks are used which were more exclusively cultural than any i have ever seen or heard of i had gotten the impression that what we ordinarily called culture was something for the few people who were able to go to college and that it was somehow bottled up and sealed in abstract language and in phrases which it took long years of study to master i found in denmark real scholars engaged in teaching ordinary country people making it their peculiar business to strip the learning of the colleges of all that was technical and abstract and giving it through the medium of common speech to the common people cultural education has usually been associated in my mind with the learning of some foreign language with learning the history and traditions of some other people i found in denmark a kind of education which although as far as it went touched every subject in every land that it was the business of the educated man to know about sought especially to inspire an interest and enthusiasm in the art the traditions the language and the history of denmark and in the people by whom the students were surrounded i saw that a cultural education could be and should be a kind of education that helps to awaken enlighten and inspire interest enthusiasm and faith in one's self in one's race and in mankind that it need not be as it sometimes has been in denmark and elsewhere a kind of education that robs its pupils of their natural independence makes them feel that something distant foreign and mysterious is better and higher than what is familiar and close at hand i have never been especially interested in discussing the question of the particular label that should be attached to any form of education i have never taken much interest for example in discussing whether the form of education which we have been giving our students at tuskegee was cultural vocational or both i have been only interested in seeing that it was the kind that was needed by the masses of the people we were trying to reach and that the work was done as well as possible under the circumstances from what i have learned in denmark i have discovered that what has been done for example by dr r h boyd in teaching the negro people to buy negro instead of white dolls for their children in order as dr boyd says to teach the children to admire and respect their own type that what has been done at fisk university to inspire in the negro a love of folk songs that what was done at tuskegee in our annual negro conferences and in our national business league to awaken an interest and enthusiasm in the masses of the people for the common life and progress of the race has done more good and in the true sense of the word has been more cultural than all the greek and latin that have ever been studied by all negroes in all the colleges in the country 
for culture of this kind spreads over more ground it touches more people and touches them more deeply my study of the danish rural schools has not only taught me what may be done to inspire and foster a national and racial spirit but it has shown how closely interwoven are the moral and material conditions of the people so that each man responds to and reflects the progress of every other man in a way to bring about a healthful wholesome condition of national and racial life end of chapter eleven what i learned about education in denmark read by aaron weber kenny lake alaska december twenty four two thousand twenty one